What's up, uh, guys? This is Chopadon coming at you with another uh, video. We're going to try and smash this slate really quick. I've got day job stuff I have to get on. It's a huge slate, and I'm going to try and just drill this thing really quick, show you the very basics of the research station, show you exactly how to use it in a very, very quick fashion and put together a competitive lineup that should work for cash games tonight. Um, the easiest way to do that, I mean, I guess I should welcome in everybody in the public, too. This is a rare thing for me where you're going to get a sneak peek of what we talk about inside the, v the DFS Army. Um, follow the link in the comments and consider becoming a VIP if you like this kind of information because, to be honest with you, there's no better place in uh, daily fantasy sports right now. And with the NBA on All-Star break, it makes good sense to branch into other sports, scratch that uh, degenerate itch that we all have, and let's show you how to do it with hockey coolest tool that we have I really don't use I was using a lot of uh, rotor grinders before and I'll show you a little bit of that but what I dive into first is our VIP only research station I look at the matchups and I'm going to be digging through and I've got a pen and paper right next to me and I'm absolutely ready to go because I just don't have a ton of time to crunch this slate the way we should today so LA Kings underdog Pittsburgh Penguins on the short list that plus uh, that minus 180 and over a three in implied total tells me good sign. Goals against average for Matt Murray down from 2.9 to 2.8. May or may not make the short list uh, tonight. So we're going to take a little bit harder look. Goals four for Pittsburgh up from 3.1 to 4.6. They're going to be chalky in cash, okay? Um, so they're on the short list. New York Rangers, New York Islanders. Islanders suck um, defensively, period. Puts the Rangers in a great spot. We saw Detroit blow up on them. We saw um, who else? Uh, whoever on my mind recently, we saw somebody else blow up on them. Uh, New York Islanders are scoring a little bit, but they're also allowing a ton of goals. Look at the goals for. Goals for is dropped off. Um, goals against, however, is up a tick in the past 21 days. That puts New York in a good spot. They're scheduled to score 3.4 goals of their own because New York is not exactly a defensive juggernaut either. That's why you see the closer total here, not touching either goalie. Uh, Carolina, New Jersey, largely off the radar. Might be a mistake, whatever, but on a 12-game slater, you know, we got to cut some, draw some lines in the sand and cut some crap. I will say this, Carolina scores quite well, but Carolina allows goals. It may be worth you digging into a little bit deeper. I'm just not going to today. I it may be a mistake to fade this game uh, with Taylor Hall and some of these other guys, but I'm just telling you, I don't like the game for whatever reason. It doesn't stand out to me. Detroit Red Wings, Tampa Bay Lightning, minus 250 favorite. Vasilevsky's in play. Vasilevsky's been sucking lately hard, but with the minus 249, he's a good bet to get a win because Detroit's pretty inept. Um, the goals against is up. Tampa Bay, I mean, this is a great spot for Detroit if they can come through again. And the goals four is up, so we're definitely going to be looking at some Lightning players. They are on the short list. Buffalo and Ottawa, largely off this game. Ottawa's not good defensively. Buffalo's on the road. Don't play so well out there on the road. Um, just fade it. Calgary, Nashville, Nashville, minus 180 favorite. Puts uh, Rene in play. The goals against has dropped to an insanely low 1.8 in his past couple of uh, weeks. And honestly, it's a, I don't know that it's cash safe, though, only because Calgary can score. Uh, Calgary's uh, goals for is right under the three mark. And I mean, but their goals against are up too. They do allow goals. And Nashville's offense has been hotter as of late. The plus the 3.05 going up to a 3.3 tells you what you need to know. Um, I don't know. It, it's it, they're a team that I'll be looking at. Uh, Washington Capitals and Minnesota Wild. No thanks. Uh, Washington GPP. You want to run some Minnesota out there? Washington's defensively not so great. Minnesota defensively hasn't been all that great either. But for cash, no. Anaheim going into Chicago. Chicago's in up. Chicago returns home. Um, Anaheim on the road. Don't know how I feel about that, but I know that top line's been hot. It's pretty much a pick 'em game. Doesn't interest me all that much for a big slate like tonight, but I wouldn't fault you for taking some ducks. Uh, Montreal Canadiens, there's only one player in there I'm interested in, and we may get to him in a little while. Facing Arizona, this is another team crap on crap. I will largely pass that game up. Edmonton, Vegas. Vegas is in a great spot tonight. Minus 210. Puts Flurry directly in play. Uh, save percentage is down a little bit. Goals against is up a little bit. But it, it's it, it's hard to go against the guy when a minus 200 slides his way. And his team is slated to score four goals. Uh, you got to love the six and a half over. You might even look at Edmonton for a little ping pong action. But I'm not 100% sure. When you get these big favorites... 
and a high over under, it's really going to slope the uh, implied goals over towards the favorite. And the heavier it goes, just like football, the heavier it goes over that direction, uh, the more points they're going to score, which means the less points these guys are going to score. So if they're not over a three, I'm not really interested in it. Can I see it shooting out? Yes, Vegas is terrible defensively too. Um, so it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but I'm going to very much be focused on the Vegas offense tonight. Vancouver, San Jose. San Jose is another minus 200. That puts a lot of goals. It's a low total, but it puts almost three goals on San Jose. San Jose allows points too, but I don't see Vancouver doing it. Um, San Jose scores points. They've got a couple defensemen you're going to want to look at. And at home, might be a, might be your safest play right there in Martin Jones. His goals against is down. His save percentage is up. Uh, his price is relatively affordable. So my short list, Flurry, uh, Jones, maybe Rene. I mean, that's about it for goalies, um, not touching Basil. That's about it for goalies tonight. Let's kick into, since we've got a couple of offenses identified, um, I've got Pittsburgh, New York's, uh, Tampa Bay, Nashville, and Vegas. Okay, and I'm going to circle San Jose as well. So Pittsburgh, what you're looking for here, the game's played, the goals, the assists, the shots on goal plus blocked shots. It's proprietary to uh, DFSArmy.com. It is a statistic shows you the floor of your player. You're looking for a lot of activity. That's where your points are going to come from. Uh, you're looking for a number around 30, hopefully better. If I take this, I try to go with last 10 games and over a you know 21 day period. A lot of times we get eight, nine, 10, 11 games. Try and balance that out to 10 games. To, de to do that, I need to add 20% to this goal. Um, hard to do with goals, hard to do with assists. I mean, it might be like 12 assists or something like that over his last 10. You can certainly game log hunt, game log hunt if you want to. But I add it to the shots on uh, shots on goal here. And so, what, 33, 10% of that is 3. So I'm going to add 20%, which is about 6. Call it 5. 38 would be his number. So 211 and 38. 38 is a great number. 9100 is a hell of a price tag. Uh, Simon on the top line, don't really like it. Uh, Rust on the top line, four goals, three assists over about 26, 27 uh, shots. You can do that for 4200. Good cheap exposure to Sidney Crosby. Uh, dropping down onto the two, you get a little bit of exposure to some of these other guys in the power play, but it's not really producing. This power play is producing on the one. It always does. It's Pittsburgh, for crying out loud. Uh, Latang one goal, four assists. So I'm going to be focused on something like a, a Crosby, a Rust, um, probably not Latang at 6,300. That's not enough production for me compared to what I'm going to see later on down when I dig through the slate. Uh, Malkin, 10 goals, six assists. I mean, come on. Over, what, 35 shots on goal? Come on. For 91 and 9,200, I'll take the goals over the assists because the goals are more productive than my fantasy team. Uh, Haglin and Kessel are, re are united with him for now. Um, for cheap, Haglin at 3,900 at 27, what, 34 shots, uh, three goals, four assists, exposure to Malkin here. Um, and Malkin, of course, gives you exposure to Crosby's big game if it happens with the power play. Uh, so if, if you ran Haglin and Rust, it's not terrible. If you ran Haglin and Malkin, it's not terrible. If you ran Haglin and Crosby, it's stupid. Because they're not on the same line. They don't overlap on the power play at all. You get no exposure. You're basically running two one-offs out of the same game. If I'm going to run two one-offs out of the same game, uh, I guess it's okay maybe in like cash games. But in tournaments and stuff where you need that correlation, you need the assist and the goal to happen at the same time, that's really, really dumb to split your guys up like that. I would rather run, you know, Malkin and Crosby would be the ideal matchup because they're both on different lines. So if the one scores, great. If the two scores, great. But I've got overlap on the same power play. So when the power play scores, I've probably got it. That's how you run correlation. Not with a guy that doesn't overlap on a power play and they're on separate lines. That's just fishy and stupid, okay? Scrolling down a little bit, uh, this New York game, what am I looking for? Uh, eight goals, so that's going to be like 36, around 30. So that top line in New York is in a great spot. Great spot. I'd like to see them producing a little bit more, but their prices are pretty low. It's a good, cheap top line stack. Going up against New York, it's not going to catch anybody by you know off guard, but it's a great stack if you wanted to run a GPP. Now, if I wanted to run... Um, cash i would probably stick to one guy maybe maybe a second guy 
Probably just the one, though. And I would try and get the guy who's producing and the cheapest guy. That looks like uh, Zuccarello, five goals and assists, 26 shots. Zuccarello's okay. Nash gets you the goals. Um, that might be the two I would consider, and I would run away from that game most likely in cash. Uh, I don't want to overexpose myself to it, take on too much risk. Uh, New York Islanders, they score as well. You can see this line is producing 93 shots on goal as a line. Um over nine games, what we'll add three, so 38, 36, about 27 or so, is pretty doggone stellar. I will say this, this minus 24, for you that don't know what plus minus is, plus minus is if you are on the ice when a goal is scored against you, you get a minus. If you're on the ice when a goal is scored for you, you get a plus. These are the guys that are on the ice when the goals are getting scored. It means they suck defensively is what it means. The second line is the tougher defensive line right now. The first line sucks. So being that they're going to, the home ice advantage situation in the last shift change might match the one up against the one. This puts them in an even better spot over here in the, on the Rangers side to be attacking this crap line. So I like them a little bit more. Maybe that makes me take two in cash. I don't know. Um, looking at them, the, the Islanders side of things, still decent. Um, nine assists for Barzil. Barzil at 6,400 is getting a little pricey for what he produces. He has really no floor, only a couple of shots per game, which is only going to get you three points if he doesn't end up with an assist. Uh, if he gets the assist, he gets you, you know, 11, 12 points. And, you know, I guess that's okay for 6,400, sort of pays it off. But I don't know. It's not phenomenal. I can find cheaper centers with similar floors in the shots category. If this is your floor. You want guys that are shooting three, four shots a game at least, and you're going to want them to also be producing. You can't kind of have one without the other. What it tells me, and I'll see if I can find a really crappy one here as we scroll down. Uh, Caroline, well, here's one, Stahl. Jordan Stahl, if he was producing more, now the assists, uh, whatever, but if he was, say, he had four goals in his last 21 uh, days, his last, say, nine games, only on 14 shots, suck it, man. That's not sustainable, okay? You're riding the hot hand hoping it continues producing. The minute he doesn't get a goal that night, you're screwed. It's not smart. That's why we look for high shots on goal. That's why this tool, this research station, is so important for people that may be considering becoming a VIP. It's because it points you in the right direction every single time. Uh, New Jersey Devils over here, 38. Taylor Hall obviously produces on this top line. Um, down here a little bit. You can run down in here for the low price of 4000 You got 25, uh, what, 27 shots on goal and one goal and four assists. Zaka's in play, okay? Now, uh, Tampa Bay was an offense we were focused on, and here's why. The top line isn't producing a ton. Yanni Gord has been producing six goals, five assists. Sixteen is not sustainable. Remember that. You want to see more. But right now, it's, the hand is also just kind of too hot to avoid for 5,600. Great one-off, great exposure to a team that is in a great situation playing a defensive unit that isn't great on that first defensive pairing. They're allowing goals. Tampa Bay is in a good spot. Uh, Victor Hedman, this is 6,900 expensive, but two goals, three assists on about 40 shots. Not bad. Okay, that's the kind of floor you're looking for. That's the kind of floor you'll pay up for. Uh, Point Kucherov, Kaloran, Kaloran's hot two for 4,300. A little bit better than uh, Yanni Gord, honestly, floor-wise. That 23 extrapolates to about 25, the 16, maybe 18. So I'd rather have the 25... Shots on goal, five goals, five assists, rather than six goals, five assists on a little bit more unsustainable production. Um, you know, I can't believe I just called Gord better, uh, or uh, Kalorn better than Gord, but for the 1300 in savings from 4300 to 5600, I might like Kalorn tonight. Uh, Buffalo, Ottawa, fade. Calgary, Nashville. Nashville, where you're looking for is most of your scoring lately has been coming out of your defenders. Now, there have been some of the skaters that have been doing okay. This second line especially, Fiala's been on fire. 5,400, great production. Uh, 28, 29 shots on goal. Uh, five goals, two assists for 5,400. Great one-off. Okay. Um, you could pair him with a Craig Smith if you wanted to. But and you what you've got Now, here's the other way to do this. If I wanted to, I'd take Fiala and Forsberg because I've got two lines of scoring, like I mentioned before, and overlapping on the same power play. The other way to break this up for cash games, Smith and Fiala. 
They're on the same line, so at even strength, they're out there on the ice all the time. It gives you a goal and an assist when they score together. But they're broken up on the power plays, so you're not out there 100% of the time. You do get access to this top power play unit through Craig Smith, which when you look at Craig Smith, he's got a power play goal. You know, the goal, it's not really producing a lot. But you've got a high volume of shots down here at even strength. This is a little riskier than the, than the I guess, the Fiala-Forsberg combo. But it is another way to break it up for cash games to make it a little bit cash safe. Nashville's in a good spot. Love Subban, 4-5 and 45. 40, extra, God, extrapolate that out to 10 games and add another four. Four and a half shots. You're at like 49, almost 50 shots per game per uh, 10 games. So five shots per game is your floor. That floor is already seven points for 6,400. I'm already at one x, a little over one x multiplier. Give me the goals and the assists of what half a goal and half an assist. Half a goal would be six points. Half an assist would be four points. Six and four is ten plus five, six seven more. Seventeen. Seventeen point floor. For 6,400 is almost 3x. It's a phenomenal spot. Subban's in a great spot. Love him. Uh, here's the other thing you can do. You want to run Subban and Fiala. You got nine goals, seven assists, 50, 75, 78 shots on goal between the two for about $12,000 for two guys. It's about 6,000 per skater. And you've got yourself even strength access to the second line. You've got an overlapping defensive pair that runs with both the ones and the twos and sits on the power play one. That's your best spread in that game right there. That's your cheapest and best spread right there. You take Fial and Subban and you get out of the game. Uh, Washington and Minnesota, no. I'm sure there are plays in it, but no. Uh, Anaheim and Chicago, probably not. But you can't deny the volume that Anaheim's been pumping on the net, and the production they've been getting out of Corey Peril and uh, Rickard Reichel. If I took those two alone, that would be another combo I would be happy to run in cash right now. Okay, 13000 bucks. I've got seven goals, 10 assists, and 60, almost 70 shots on goal. That's a hell of a floor. Again, I've got, what, between the two of them, uh, 0.7 goals, so that's about 10 points, uh, an assist per game is another 8, so it's about 18, and a floor of about 10, 11 shots, it's about another 15, 18, 15, 33, 33 divided by 2 is 15 per player, 15 per player is 3x here and almost 3x here. It's a good cash safe floor. If you want to know how to calculate this stuff, we need to talk more often. We do that in Slack. You need to be a VIP to get that kind of access to the coaching. But the bottom line is it'll make you a better player. Uh, get you looking at these things in a little bit different way. Uh, Montreal Canadiens, Arizona Coyotes, yuck. Uh, the only player I would play here is Petri. Petri is so damn cash safe it's retarded. For uh, under 5K, four goals, three assists, 56 shots on, on uh, shots on goal. And that's at eight games. Put another 20% on that, you're at 65. 65, that's a nine-point floor. Nine-point floor with no production. Add in half a goal for six points and maybe a third of an assist for about three points. So, you know, what are we at? Six and three is nine. Nine and nine is 18-point floor for 4,700. Police. Where do I sign up? And Arizona's not good. So Montreal's in a pretty darn good spot. Uh, I just don't, don't really trust a lot of these guys outside of Petri. And Petri's giving me access to the power play and that top line and a little bit of the second line. So I kind of get it all in access to that offense. And I can use that as a one-off and then bug out. Uh, Edmonton and Vegas. Um, seven games played for these guys in their last, 10, last 21 games. Uh, Connor McDavid's a beast. Add 30% to that. It's 45 shots, uh, eight goals, five assists, probably a little more than that over, you know, 45 shots. <clears throat> 9,100 is going to cost you. Uh, Drasadi is, is another one that uh, puts on about, what, 35, 36 shots over 10 games, four goals, six assists, 7,200. That's cheaper access. And with them overlapping on the one, it gives you access to Connor David on the power play. It's another smart move. Uh, Russell's been good. Clef Bump's been all right. 
these are the defensemen I would be focused on. If I was going to touch anybody out of this game, I just believe that for cash, I'm going to need value tonight. And uh, Connor McDavid's a little too pricey. I mean, there's no doubt the dude's a hat trick waiting to happen. So if you wanted to run him as a one-off, please do. I, I, I'm not saying he's a bad play at all. Uh, I'm just saying to me it feels a little pricey. Now, I may go there tonight later when thoughts and stuff come out. I don't really know. Uh, I haven't looked at it too deeply. Um, Vegas Golden Knights, uh, top line's always in play. Second line's pretty good as well. Um, Howla got hurt, obviously. That, that hurts that line a lot. So you might just stick to the top line. Uh, in a pretty good spot, if we look back over at plus minus, pretty neutral to negative Edmonton. Look at uh, because they're scoring, the top line is producing and, and defensively a little bit tougher the bottom line. Um, the second line is giving up the goals. So I don't know if that's going to match up two on two or if one on two. It puts Drasadi in a great spot, though. Uh, Drasadi's in a great spot. Um, Carlson, Smith, uh, Marsha Shaw, it's an expensive line now, 13, 20, 20.7, 20, $20,700 for three players is about seven per. That's pretty pricey. Um, it's a good way to go tonight, though. If I look at it, I mean, I'm 10 goals, 16 assists on 82 shots, really 90 shots because you add 10% for that nine games to turn it into 10 games. Um, hard to argue. The only thing I would say is avoid the defenders out of this game, man. I see people running these guys in cash because they're cheap, and that's fine. Um, I, but there's better plays out there. Pay up for Petri. You know, Theodore's done nothing. Look, you get no production. Get no production out of these guys to speak of. I mean, this isn't sustainable on 12 shots. Two goals on 12 shots. Nice luck, McNabb. You turd. Um, Vancouver and San Jose. Really thought I liked that Vegas and Edmonton game a little more than I did. I mean, I do like it, but Halle being out really hurts. Uh, San Jose, Vancouver. Vancouver, negatives all over the place. They suck. Uh, San Jose, big volume on that top line over the last 10 games. Decent volume on the second line. Not a lot of second lines are putting out 80 shots um, you know, per 10 games. Look at this down here, though. 45 for 4,800. 45 shots on goal with a little bit of production out of Vlasic. Of course, Burns is Burns. Two goals, seven assists, 60. Damn near 60 shots on goal. 7,400. This is the thing I'm going to tell you as well. This is my tip to you, and I say it all the time inside to our VIPs, but you know, it's, it should be common knowledge by now. Positional scarcity is a major thing. And when you have very few options, top line options at a position, you should tend to pay up for them. When you have a very deep position for the night, you should tend to pay down. You don't need to pay up for it when you've got other viable options. In defense, you've got a lot of cheap viable options, but you don't have a lot of premium options. And when you've got a $7,400 player that cranks out this kind of volume, Oh my God, why aren't you just loading him up every night for cash? Your cash game should almost start right there. Number one, he's a defenseman. You don't get defensemen that can produce like a forward at this price. They're all $9,000. So that's a $1,500 savings built in right there to Brent Burns. Number two, he also has been playing a little bit up with the, you know, up with the, in more of a scoring role, in more of almost like a winger when it comes to those top lines. He pinches all the time. He's down. It's just you're not going to find that type of play. It's like rostering a fifth forward for the night, and that's where all your goal scoring comes from, the forwards. When you got Brent Burns, you've got that opportunity. Take advantage of it. Uh, other guys, um, I guess they flip-flop this line around a little bit with uh, Pavelski cranking on the shots. They're calling him the one now. Timo Meyer's pretty cheap still. Uh, Donskoy's not terrible. Couture with the goals and the volume, he's $7,000, though. That is pretty pricey. For $7,000, I'd look up at $8,000 for, like, a, a Patricia, uh, a, a Pat, uh, God, what's the name I'm looking for? Philip Forsberg would be one. Um, I might even look up a little bit more to Malkin Crosby types, um, or I'm going to go down. And if I go down, I'm going to go down well below the $7,000. I might look at uh, Carlson up in here um, for his price, $7,100. 2, 5, and 26 versus 5, 4, and 30. Well, okay, you can't argue the 5, 4, and 33 is better. It's producing better. 
So there's better value in Couture than there is Carlson. So, but anyway, that's a brief rundown of how to use this sheet. You're going to pick your target games. You're going to knock off, scratch them off a piece of paper. You're going to target your goalies, and then you're going to come down here. And you want to, um, I guess, the other thing, I don't want to go too long today, but it is a big slate, so I apologize. Uh, for the four-week numbers, uh, what I'm using Roto Grinders for now, get your, your filters out and kill off the offenses you don't want to use. I mean, I'm only going to use a few. I, I don't... Can't, yeah, Vegas is on. Vegas, San Jose, Nashville, this game, and Pittsburgh. And so I've cut that down automatically. And now I've sorted by salary, and I've opened it all the way up down here uh, where it comes off page by page by page. I click all, and I open them all up. And now I'm going to go start digging for value. And I want to start uh, Nasek here. Only one game played. Might not even be on the ice tonight. Um, 13, Pulak in New York. He's going to be in play. Going to look deeper into him. Uh, Rust for Pittsburgh. Going to look deeper into him. We already pointed him out. Uh, this is 4,600. I'm looking for, say, 12 to 13 points. There's 15 points out of Vlasic. Got to look into him tonight. Again, I'm looking for 3x this type of stuff. If I can find that averaged over four weeks, I'm looking really good down here in the punt categories. Okay, punt category, anything under about 5K. Start getting up to 6K, I want to start seeing 15 points. Don't really see it here. I mean, I see some good guys that I would look into. Yanni Gord, uh, Kevin Fiala, of course, we've already mentioned them. But you can see how this is really popping them out. Uh, Hala, he's hurt. There's 16 points for David Perron. So Perron would be worth looking into. When you do, you click on his name. You can go back to our research station and find uh, Perron if you want. And the way you do that. Three goals, eight assists, over 21 shots, over nine games. So about 23 shots. He doesn't shoot a lot, but he sets people up. And he's running on the second power play unit. Like I said, they're going to miss Hala. Uh, but the other way to do it is go into the game log. Come down two, four, six, eight, ten games, and just count them up. What have I got? One, two, three goals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten assists. So that's that ninth game. That tenth game had two assists in it, which is why our research station varies just a smidge. And then count up the shots. The problem with um, silly rotor grinders, they don't count your blocks. Uh, blocks matter too. But that's what you're basically doing. The other thing I'm going to do, as I miss the scroll here, I'm gonna say, how's you been producing lately? There's a big consistent stretch right there. I've been a little inconsistent of late. Okay, that may be the tiebreaker for you tonight. Uh, when I scroll up, I'm uh, seventh. I'd like to see around 20 points per game, but that's really, really hard to come by. Again, uh, Brent Burns and Philip Forsberg are kind of the same type of producers right now. When I come down here price-wise, why would I pay 9,200? Well, 23 points. Why would I pay 9,100 for 18 points when I can pay 7,400 for 18 points? That's value. That's how you find value. Scroll down a little deeper, see if you can't find another big number. There's that 16 for Perron again. Um, now we're getting down in towards the 14s and 15s. There's 15 for 4,800. Why would I pay... Let's see if I can find another 15. I mean, look, I can go all the way up. Why would I pay 1,500 for Pavelski? Or, you know, 7,300 for Pavelski for 15 points when I can pay... Uh, 4,800 for Vlasic and get the same wherever Vlasic went. Probably didn't scroll down far enough. There he is, 1,509. 4,800 for the same 15 points. You see how the value shopping works? You want to run some double Ds? We like to make fun of that out on Twitter. Uh, double defenseman, Burns and Vlasic. Double Ds. That's how it rolls. So let's go plug them in. Let's say we look at... Um, I told you I'd start with Petri, and I probably would. But let's have some fun. Um... It's plugging Gibson for a little bit cheaper goalie. I could run, you know, a handful of these guys. Uh, Rennie's in there. Uh, Flurry should be in there somewhere. Where is Flurry? Wow, another hundred bucks off. Why not? Take the hundred bucks. Thanks. Um, I'll go into the San Jose game. I'll run the defenders, and I'll run Burns in there first, and I'll run Vlasic in there next. Double D's, please. Now I'll come in here for Vegas, and we liked Perron, right? I mean, taking a little bit of a chance. Do they overlap on a power play? Um, he's on the two, and so that doesn't give me access up here to the one. So I might be done with this game unless I want to run like a Marshall Shaw 
or a Riley Smith. Riley Smith, 6,200, gets me access to the ones. Five goals, five assists, 6,200 versus Perron, 6,500. A little cheaper, too. Um, easy decision. Riley Smith, thanks. There's my one-off. Okay. Now, who else did I maybe identify as a value play because I'm sitting on 5,600 and I want to start looking at these value plays. I've got Vlasic in there. I've got Smith in there. Um, if I scroll down a little bit here, let's start looking for some of these other guys that we might we might want to be looking for. We might want to find uh, oh Rust and Haglin in. Uh, let's compare Rust and Haglin back up here in Pittsburgh. Go back to the research station. Oh, going to be some guys in there. I might as well just look at these guys instead. Now that I didn't find any deep value. In the player stats, uh, Rust, 4, 8, and 24, really 28, right? 28, 29. Haglin, 3, 4, and about 30-something, 30 3,900, 4,200. Let's take the 3,900 tonight. So, pledge allegiance to the Hag. If you're an Eric Church fan, you got that joke. But you got me all the way back up to 6K. Now, I wouldn't run him with Rust, remember? Let's uh, take a peek at uh, Tampa Bay. See if we can find some cheaper ones. Uh, Yanni Gord's okay. Rain Point, Kalorn, 4,300. Remember, we identified him. Where's the Tampa Bay game? And notice we're focusing on home teams. So now I've got myself a couple of one-offs, a little bit of correlation. I don't think Burns is going to pass the Vlasic, who's going to score. But... There's at least that exposure to that offense, and they're both value plays. I'm at 6,600. Um, what does what does Malkin do to me? Because since I ran Haglin, again, looking at the research station back up here to Pittsburgh, I'll show you why. Malkin and Haglin are on the same line, but they you know differ on the power plays a little bit. Okay. Haglin doesn't really get a lot, but this is this is getting a little bit. Uh, too correlated for cash, but it's just one single risk that I might be running. I'm not going to run more than two guys in there. I'm looking for, you know, some other decent guy in here. Uh, what do we say? Zuccarello? What if I ran him as my other wing? I mean, this is just playing, and this will change throughout the day. There's absolutely no doubt that this will change throughout the day. It gets me access into that game that should go sideways. 4,600 for a center. Open it back up to all of them. Let's see if we have anything left. If not, we've got to go saving some salary somewhere. But notice I'm not exactly punting. Uh, Brock Nelson, we didn't mind him, right? Plays the other side of that game. Uh, Brock Nelson. Oh, he's a third liner. Well, let's, let's dig in. He's hitting my radar for a different reason, I guess. Uh, I go game log on him. Not a lot of production lately. There was a four-game stretch there, so if I go two, four, six, say I go over the last six games, four goals, three assists over the last six games uh, on about seven shots, about eight blocks. Seven and eight is 15. Uh, it's not great. It's not really sustainable. Ellerstrom, Sajak, Byron... Oh, I don't like this. So if I wanted to round this last one out, boy, oh boy. I have to keep climbing up to get Barzil. I got to go up. So I'm, it's going to cost me a forward. Or it's going to cost me Burns. Or it's going to cost me Malkin. So if I run off the centers and I look for that 6,900, I can get a couple of $7,000 centers. You know what that means. It means I can get Couture. And then I'd have to get one down here at 6,800 or lower. Uh, I can go up a little bit higher. Can't get the big three. Pavelski. We said Couture was better. There's Carlson again. Don't necessarily want to run him. Um, I guess for yeah, I was thinking Forsberg was a center. Forsberg's a wing. 
So sorry to crush you with the time here and make this really drag out a little bit, but let's run Couture and let's take out um, Vlasic so that we're not too over-correlated in the game, in that one particular game. Run Petri in there for Montreal since it's six one way, half dozen the other. 6,900 left for a center. Click back on the center, but I'm picking from higher dollar guys right now. Ryan O'Reilly in Buffalo. Ottawa's not good. Look at O'Reilly's numbers lately. We didn't spotlight him, but let me show you what he's done. Let's go last five. One, two, three, four, five. Four goals, four assists on six and 11. 17 shots with about five blocks of so 22. In the last five games, four goals, it translates to eight over 10. So if you're wanting to really calculate what he's running at, give yourself about 10 points for that. Give yourself another six for the assists. So that's 14 points. 22 is 44, 44 times 1.6, well, 4.5 times 1.6 is about another 6, 18, 6, about a 24-point floor, and when you look at it, it's about what you're getting. You're getting about 20 points out of him over those last five. Um, boink. There's a lineup. You know, we'll go back and play with it later, but that's how you do this thing. And it didn't take long. What are we? We're 36 minutes in, and we've completely busted up a 12-game slate, and we're in a very competitive spot. That game, that lineup... Probably safe for cash games, head-to-heads, whatever. It could be a little tighter correlated. It could be paid a little bit more attention to. But you've got access to all of your bigger offenses tonight. You've got um, access to all of your bigger players where you're paying down. And you've got a couple of your bigger players in it. That's how you run a hockey lineup in, you know, 45 minutes or less. My day's done. It's time to go do the day job stuff. You guys take care, and we'll. Uh, I guess we'll see you when we see you. But don't forget. Code CHOP, C-H-O-P, 10% off your grandfathered lifetime membership inside DFSArmy.com where you get this kind of coaching every day, not just every couple of days um, when I skim a slate. You get a lot deeper stuff out of us inside our Slack channels, and you get access to all of our coaches across all of our sports. We're up to about 20 coaches now. Uh, baseball's coming. NASCAR kicks off this week. Uh, PGA is always uh, rocking and rolling. You guys, you're, just, you're missing way too much content. We've got optimizers that are just producing – uh, massive winners for NBA all the time. You're just you're you're missing out if you're not a VIP. Well worth the money. Come on in, say hi to us, and uh, use that code chop because friends don't let friends pay retail. I will see you guys uh, probably next week. Peace.